Guys, welcome back, and today it's time to get in that ass. I mean, we're like doing stuff in the back of that car, brakes and stuff. All right, sorry if that was a little crude. I just thought it was funny. Anyway, so today we are getting uh, to work on Uncle Mike's Mustang. We've got rear end stuff here. We've got the disc brakes for the back. We've got underwriter traction bars. And uh, first things first, we're gonna get this car up off the ground on jack stands. And I'm contemplating opening the door, but it's cooler in here. And as soon as I open the door, it's gonna get hot in here. So maybe I'll just keep the door closed. Uh, I think there's probably enough light, but let's pull the wheels off, get this thing up and um, rip everything off and see what we're working with. Standard drum brakes. Uh, oh, it's got Gravitrack springs. It's got good springs on it. Excellent. Okay, so the suspension back here looks good. Oh man, it's dark. You guys can't see very much. I'll go get a light. But, oh. Oh, it's got an e-brake. Man, this is one of the things that I'm really going to enjoy about working on Uncle Mike's car. Um, he spent the money and did it right when he had all this stuff done, so most of the stuff I'm taking off of here is new. So, all the drum brake, ouch, all the drum brake components on the back of this car are brand new, so they're going to come apart real easy. What did I come over here for? You guys ever do that? Just like forget what the fuck you were doing? I remember, I came over for a light. <laughs> okay. So let me show you guys what's going on back here. So I know in that initial intro video, I said that this was a nine inch rear end and uh, it is not, I was corrected. Uh, it is an eight inch rear end that looks like it's leaking. Let's see if we can get back in there. There is some kind of, oops, that's the wrong one. Is that maybe just a vent tube leak or what? I don't know. It's been rebuilt, like there's fresh paint on it. Something's leaking. I think it's probably just a vent tube, which is okay, no big deal. We'll clean it off. But yeah, so all this brake stuff is brand new. Look at this. Like the linings are new, everything's new, new, new. So it's gonna come apart just nicely. Okay, so now that we know we're, what we are working with here, let's break into the parts and see what we got. Okay, here is what we got. We went with uh, the Right Stuff Detailings uh, kit for rear disc brakes, and here's everything it comes with. It's got the soft lines, e-brake cables, all the standoffs and bushings, brackets, weld-on brake tabs. These weld to the rear end to hold the brake lines. All the mounting hardware, and... Uh, calipers with the parking brake provision that's a big deal and the discs over there so now I gotta jump into that booklet here and see what my next step is I'm assuming it's gonna be to rip everything off what's on there as far as the drums and stuff but uh, let me get into that and then uh, I'll come back and set up the camera and uh, we'll go from there okay so something interesting here um, I was right the instructions just rip everything off so I'm gonna start loosen in the backing plate here and pull the axle and drop that whole backing plate. I should be able to just take the backing plate off loaded with the brakes in it. Um, that's my assumption. I'm going to try it anyways. But here's something interesting. You see that top bolt there? 
See how it's a fine thread and a locking nut? Look at this. That is a coarse bolt and a non-locking thread. And I bet you dollars to donuts it's not a T-bolt on the back. So these are all T-bolts. That should be a T-bolt. And uh, as it rotates, it goes up against the back of the housing and keeps, uh, keeps it from rotating so you don't have to hold it. Yep, there's a, yep, it's not a T-nut, a T-bolt. It's a regular bolt. So that's interesting. Uh, what's the other side look like? The other side's correct. A little moisture back here too. I'm gonna look at these axle seals while I have it apart and see uh, see if they're weeping. I might just replace them while I'm in here. So that's one thing that uh, we can we can fix. I'll order. I will order a T-bolt and uh, put it back together correctly. Okay, uh, here is the next alibi, is this retainer plate needs to be removed and I can press this bearing off. I've got enough presses over there, I can do that. Uh, or I can cut it off. And I think I'm gonna save myself the setup and possibility of damaging this bearing. I'm just gonna cut that off. Okay, we've got everything uh, removed. I got the uh, backing plates for the axles um, cut off and the axle reinstalled and the axle seal looked fine it, there was a little bit of junk in there but i think most of it actually turned out to be water and the seal looked fine inside um, still plenty pliable so i'm going to go ahead and move forward with the installation of the brackets a few moments later hey guys next day uh, we're back here uh, new camera so if things look different or sound different uh, that's why i'll explain more later um Where'd we leave off here? Let me get you off here. where we leave off? Uh, we've got the e-brake stuff installed, roughly. Uh, it all matches up and it fits all the, uh, the factory mounting points and everything. So I was super pumped on that. I might have to do some kind of uh, tie up their cable, like mounting deal thing up there. And then um, I'm going to, once I can verify that works, I'll make sure that the e-brake works and then, oh yeah, we've got to um, weld the bracket for the hard line. We've got to make a hard line and then this side will be done and then I'll pull that slapper bar off, mount up the underwriter slapper bar, which is right there, not slapper bar, but the underwriter bar, which is over there. And then this side will be done and then we'll move on to the other side. I've got a few concerns about the traction bars but we'll go over those in a moment. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get these old traction bars off of here. We've got, if we look down here, we've got the hard line removed from the T back there. And so this side, this other side that runs to the passenger side, I'll probably reuse most of that and just cut it and make a new line off of it on the other side. Uh, but this side right here, we need a new hard line from, from the T back there to this. So we're going to build that now.
This, uh, this line that I'm about to make is super simple. If you have any questions on how to make brake lines, check out my other video uh, on putting brakes in the Falcon. I'll cart it up there. Uh, I think it's gonna be up there, or this side. Whichever side it's gonna be on, it's gonna be up there. So check that out if you have questions on how to make brake lines and the tools I use for that. Okay, I've got the camera set up in a position where I think you should be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, you can see the T in the back here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install this fitting that I just made, this line that I just made onto this T. And then uh, I'm gonna come forward with it and determine where it needs to, where it needs to stop or terminate for the, uh, the other part. All right, I've got the line out um, and it's marked. I'm not sure if you see that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut it and then put the other flare nut on there and um, flare that. So it's coming together. Okay, we've got the line built here. And so what I did is it's just a 90 degree with, you know, with the two fittings on it. But the material here is Nikop, which is very soft. Um, so what I'm going to be able to do is I think I'm probably gonna have to bend it down and then kind of jog it in a little bit just to absorb some of the length. And also this end is kind of high. So I don't know, I'm going to mock it up here and see, uh, see how I like it. And if I need to adjust it, uh, the beauty of this material is it lends to that. So I can tweak it uh, to where I like it. It's the same thing I did with the Falcon. I kind of laid everything out and then did what was pleasing to the eye. And that's, that's how that kind of came out in my opinion, sharper. So Nikop's good stuff. Easy, easy to use for that. Okay, so here's what I've done. Uh, here's my tab and it's gonna just sit uh, um, perpendicular to the axle tube. So that looks good. And then what I did, I don't know if you can see that, but I just kicked a little bit of a, I don't know, it's whatever the difference here is, 30 degrees or so. I just kicked that angle into the tube um, and it kind of, it goes into a straight shot here. There's a little bit of rubbing from this vent tube, but barely anything. I'll probably just try and move that out of the way the best I can. But now the next step is I'm gonna get the flap disc over here, clean uh, the axle tube off and the tip of uh, this bracket, not just the tip. And uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna tack it in place. And that part will be complete. Okay, I got the brake tab mounted and I just need to degrease it some more and I'm gonna hit it with some paint to uh, keep it from rusting. Then I'm gonna reassemble everything and then show you how it looks. Well, I tried to, I tried to keep the overspray off everything. I'll clean that up. Anyways, there's a tab painted, time to reassemble. Okay, so I'm just tightening the lines up now. Everything is together and it looks like it fits real good. So after I get this tightened up, I am gonna start looking at the e-brake cable and making sure that that is addressed. And then from there, we will do the underrider traction bars. So this thing's coming together pretty good. Um, no real, you know, pains in the butt or big bumps in the road. This is a bolt-on kit, so I'm not really expecting a bunch, but uh, it's always nice when it goes smooth. If you guys are not familiar with nut certs, they are awesome. So basically this is a, this is a nut cert tool. And I'm gonna put this down here. And the way it works is you have this threaded insert here, right here. 
and you drill a hole that matches the outer diameter of this, slide it in the hole and thread the tool on. And then the way this works is as you apply pressure to the handle here, it basically crimps this end kind of out over itself and holds itself into a hole that you've made that you drilled. And then you have a, uh, a threaded, a threaded hole just like that. So this is what we're going to use to hang this line in here. Okay, so I've got my hole drilled in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's, uh, it's right. Uh, my hole drilled is right there. Anyways, uh, there is uh, uncoated metal there. So I know even though I'm going to put a nut cert in there, I'm still going to hit it with a spot of paint real quick just to keep it from rusting. Okay, um, I've got the, uh, the hose, hose mount or hose clamp installed, and the line looks good. It's got a nice... Uh, let me see if I can get this to you, or if you can get this. It's got a nice uh, straight shot into the caliper. It comes around there and goes right up into the uh, the factory union. So this is going to work real well. It's going to clear the wheel and everything. That looks good. So um, now all that the brakes are essentially done on this side. I just got to pull it all apart and um, torque everything to spec and lock tight the things that I want to lock tight and it'll be done. Alright guys, that's where we're going to stop this one for the day. We're just waiting on some parts, uh, T-bolts, and uh, I had to end up ordering new U-bolts for the back too of uh, Mike's Mustang here. But we're going to call that one for the day. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you can get all the um, notifications for Uncle Mike's Mustang, and this little white car too. I do stuff on that from time to time too. Thanks so much guys, we'll see ya.